y'all, Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about why I don't fool with Gore-Tex trail running. It's Gore-Tex. <laughs> you know about Gore-Tex? For those of y'all who are wondering, well, what is Gore-Tex? You like saying Gore-Tex, don't you? It is a synthetic fabric, which is actually a trademark technology that is permeable to air and water vapor. So the idea is it's a waterproof fabric that will not allow water into it, but that can breathe and allow air and water vapor to go out from it. That way it is waterproof yet ventilated. The whole purpose behind this technology is that in outdoor gear and sports gear and clothing that people could wear this and sweat and that it would be better than a synthetic material like nylon where it would be more breathable but yet waterproof. So in the world of backpacking shoes, the point was to not allow water inside and to also allow your feet to stay dry because the fabric is breathable and will allow water vapor from sweat to come out of the shoe. Now this might sound like a wonderful idea, but as we all know, ideas don't always translate into functioning how they were intended to. When I was through hiking the Appalachian Trail, I decided that boots were just not gonna work for me. And I went from a boot to a trail runner because I had issues with my Achilles. And I found out that I just didn't need that ankle support that a lot of folks said that I might. And actually it was hindering me, but we won't go into the boots and trail runners topic today, uh, but just know that boots were not working for me. So I decided to switch to trail runners. I talked to the salesman and he's like, you know, you're probably going to wear whatever you buy now into the Smoky Mountains. And the Smokies are known for their wet, rainy, misty days. So it might be a good idea for you to have some Gore-Tex trail runners to help keep your feet dry. And because I basically had no backpacking experience at this point, except that first little section that I had done on the Appalachian Trail, I took his word for it and decided why not try it out? It sounds like a great idea. After wearing these Gore-Tex trail runners and then later having several pair of non-waterproof, non-Gore-Tex, Trail runners, I realized several things about the Gore-Tex. First, my feet sweat, and non-Gore-Tex shoes are always going to be more ventilated and more breathable than a Gore-Tex shoe. On dry days, I found my feet to be more sweaty, clammy, damp, hot, and just altogether less comfortable in Gore-Tex shoes than non-Gore-Tex shoes. Having your feet in a sweaty, hot, stagnant kind of environment is really a bad idea while you're backpacking. It makes your feet more prone to blisters. It's a breeding ground for bacteria to infect blisters or other cuts or scrapes on your feet. And then also it's a great habitat for fungus, things like trench foot that backpackers definitely don't want to have while on a trip or ever for that matter. The second thing I learned about my new Gore-Tex shoes is that rain will get in, especially a slow soaking rain, something like in the Smoky Mountains or really a slow soaking rain anywhere because there's this big hole at the top where your foot goes. <laughs> so eventually after everything else is soaked, rain will go in the top there. Now what I did not try is waterproof gaiters and waterproof rain pants and you know all of that as a system together that could have potentially worked. But having waterproof gaiters was definitely not extra weight that I was interested in. And most of the time in the late spring and in the summer, I don't hack with rain pants because it's just so hot. So having that whole setup would have probably heated me up too much anyway. And then I would have the same result from sweat instead of rain. And finally, I learned that if I was going to be going through water crossings, fording any deep creeks or rivers that were deeper than ankle level, then having these waterproof shoes was really kind of a pain because I had to stop, take them off, go through barefooted, put them back on. And if you have several water crossings in a row, this really gets time consuming and just kind of isn't feasible, at least for a through hike. So in these three instances of overly sweaty feet, having rain come in the shoe or going through a water crossing and just saying, forget it, I don't have time to pull them off. And, you know, having your shoes flooded, then you've got wet Gore-Tex shoes. And again, they aren't as breathable as a non-Gore-Tex shoe, so they're gonna take a lot longer to dry. Sure, a non-Gore-Tex breathable shoe will also take a while to dry, but it's gonna be like you're hiking in a damp shoe versus a waterlogged, soaking wet shoe. With my non-Gore-Tex shoes, I've noticed that if it stops raining or after I've gone through the water crossing or even you know, on a hot summer day when I take a break and let my feet air out, and put my socks back on that over time my shoes dry out and that hiking kind of helps that. With the Gore-Tex, it just wasn't like that at all. Even on a zero day when I would go resupply and take a break 
and I would have my shoes off while I was in town, I noticed that the Gore-Tex shoes took way longer. And sometimes when I was ready to hit the trail, they weren't dry yet. And the non-Gore-Tex was usually dry and ready to go. And finally, something that I find worrisome that, you know, I haven't actually tested for myself because I got rid of the Gore-Tex shoes before their life ran out. But I feel like the Gore-Tex material is eventually going to be compromised after some wear and tear. So sure, when you first get them, you can go stand in a bathtub and do a little test to make sure that they're actually waterproof. But after you wear them for a while, you know, is the water going to start seeping through? And if so, and you haven't, you know, worn out the tread or the lifetime of the shoe in general, then you're going to have a Gore-Tex shoe that is not well ventilated, allows water inside to flood your feet and, you know, isn't going to dry quickly. Because of all of this, I decided that Gore-Tex trail runners just were not for me. If I was going to be hiking in the spring, summer, and fall. And for me, even if I'm going to be hitting some intermittent snow because I take too long to get to the northern terminus like I did on the AT, PCT, and CDT, I still prefer the breathable shoes. If I'm worried about my feet getting cold, then I'll add some neoprene booties for warmth. You know, they don't keep my feet dry, but on a dry day, I can remove those and allow my shoes and my feet to dry out. Now I do wanna add a couple of comments here at the end and just say that this is speaking from a standpoint of my experience with Gore-Tex trail runners. I do not have personal experience with Gore-Tex boots, but I do feel like the rain and the sweat issues would be the same. And also I am not a winter hacker, so I'm not getting out there in extreme wintry conditions. Yes, for a short period of time at the end of my through hikes, I have experienced some wintery conditions, but it's not like I'm out in it months at a time. All right, well, that's all I have to share about my experience with Gore-Tex trail runners. Uh, I, will, I will never go back to those, uh, not unless they magically, um, drastically improve the technology. I really do prefer well-ventilated trail runners and they did very well for me. But if y'all have any experience with Gore-Tex trail runners or boots, especially in wintery conditions or really any experience whatsoever, please feel free to share that in the comments below. I'd like to hear what footwear you use, how long you used it, and how it worked out for you. All right, y'all, well, thank you so much for watching and do not forget to hit subscribe if you like the content on this channel and we will see y'all next time.